Hello, and welcome to another edition of Music Stuff with Spock, and part three of what is now a four-part set of videos on my little musician's bag of tricks. So far we've looked at the generalities of how these things are written. They either involve some kind of different note head, or articulation mark on the stem or above the note, or something above the staff, or some kind of descriptive phrase describing what's happening. And we have looked at the general effects of trills and tremolos, glissandos and harmonics, and various noise sounds for different instruments. This third video is primarily going to be on wind instruments, and then it'll get into the percussion stuff, uh, and then that will abruptly end and will be continued in the fourth part. Um, so let's get right to it. Okay, so the next trick I'd like to talk about is for winds. It's called singing through the instrument. And this can be done on most wind instruments, but depending on how you sing and what notes you sing works better on certain instruments than other ones. With woodwinds, uh, for example, the uh, tenor recorder, a good thing to do is sing the same note that you're playing. So uh, I'm a bass, so I can only play for a small amount of the range on this instrument. But anyway, if I play the low D on this tenor recorder, so if I sing that note, and you get a timbre that's unlike either the singing or the playing of the instrument. Um, and this can be done at the unison. And it can be done at the octave. For that kind of an effect. Um, you can also sing other notes, and if you sing just slightly out of tune, you can hear the beating. And because I can't sing perfectly in tune, because I'm not a singer, I'm always singing slightly out of tune, and that's where the effect really comes from. Now when we do this effect with the flute, it's got a particular name. It's called speak flute. Same note. Now on a flute, when you ask somebody to sing through the flute, it's not the same as a recorder. Uh, to do the speak flute effect, you, you write speak flute above, and then you, you can write the note that's supposed to be sung. Um, when you just sing through the instrument, you do that kind of thing, usually with, uh, in combination with some kind of tremolos. When you sing through the clarinet, it's not really the same effect, uh, although you can get kind of a growling effect. This is a fairly different technique on brass instrument. Brass instruments can play a type of singing through the instrument effect called multiphonics. And what is happening is you're playing one note, you're singing another note, and there are what are called some indifference tones, and you come out with a chord. <laughs> And the beating is much more noticeable on brass instruments if you don't have it exactly in tune. <laughs> 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 
There are a number of different kinds of articulations you can do with the flute. Instead of just a, a duh or a tuh sound, a type of glissando on the flute uh, that is specific to the flute is called rolling off a note. And the way we do that is we play a note, and then we roll the flute and slightly change the armature and you get a glissando that goes down about a semitone. And that's usually written with a, a little line with a gliss and the words roll or roll off, or even just a glissando and leave it up to the player. Because with an open hole flute, which this is not, you can slowly roll your fingers up and do a glissando that way, uh, similar to how you do it on a clarinet. <laughs> On top of the normal blowing through the instrument sounds, wind instruments can also make a number of percussive noises. However, a lot of these are very quiet, so they're better suited for chamber music, soloistic passages, uh, and passages where the background is playing very quietly. For example, for that you can do key clicks. To make these key noises, um, we depress certain holes, and then wherever you uh, click, this part resonates. And so, and you can get the same note with different fingerings. Uh, for example, is different than subtly. Now, if you don't hold down the holes, you just get a, a clicking kind of sound. And any uh, woodwind with keys can make these clicking kind of sounds. Brass instruments with valves can make sort of a similar sound, but they're more percussive and thumpy. Now the trombone doesn't have valves unless you have one with an F attachment or a bass trombone and they uh, have a key you can click. But you can use a very soft stick or if you don't care about your instrument, a heavy stick, I suppose, and get percussive sounds and play brass-like percussion sounds. With brass instruments, you can get a resonant popping sound by smacking the mouthpiece with the palm of the hand. But don't do it too hard, or you end up jamming the mouthpiece into the instrument.
Brass instruments can play a quick upward rush through the harmonic overtone series, which I believe is called a rip, or sometimes called a rip, where the player rapidly changes their embouchure, and it produces a, a loud, rude kind of elephant noise. <laughs> And this can be done on all the brass instruments. On top of that, brass instruments can produce a pedal tone by using a very loose lip. As far as I'm concerned, the two types of instruments that have the most variation in terms of timbre production are very, very long strings, like the lowest strings of the piano and the bass, and maybe the lowest string on the cello, and plate instruments like a cymbal or a gong or a tam-tam. The usual mode of sound production on a cymbal is to use some kind of a beater. Usually it's a stick or a mallet. A stick is usually made of wood, and when you hit it, you get a fairly bright timbre. Uh, if you want a softer timbre, we usually use a mallet, which is a stick with some kind of a soft end on it. This is a, a yarn-tipped mallet. And that gets rid of all the high end. And so those are the usual two sounds that are used. If you want some kind of a crescendo, then we use two of these and we do a roll. any kind of sustain note has to be done with a roll. Now the tricks you can do with a cymbal, one of the tricks is just to use different kinds of beaters uh, or even a brush. And you can get a very delicate little wispy swish with it. And a, a fairly soft and del delicate hit. Now if you use different sized sticks you also get different timbres. Um, this is a fairly small stick on the end of this. As opposed to a regular stick. And this is the chop stick, which is even a smaller stick. And this is a barbecue skewer. Okay, I'm going to end the video here, uh, so join me in part four where we will continue looking at effects for the cymbal and other percussion instruments. But before we go, another short little study based on the effects that were in this video and a few from the previous. So, join me in the next part. See you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.